Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Prime Talk. Today, I'm really excited to have an extremely special guest. I'm having Isabella Hamilton. Isabella is the founder and CEO of RankBell, which is a leading service solution for ranking products on Amazon. So if you want your products on Amazon to rank higher, hopefully make it to the top, that's it. She's the place to go. Isabella, welcome to the show. Thank you, Yoni. I'm so excited to be here. We should have done this like years ago, but you know, it's never too late. Perfect time, perfect place, right? Everything at its right time. So uh, I, I think this really is the best time. Um, and today's episode is really going to be all about you, the story of Isabella Hamilton. And you're going to share with our audience um, everything. You know, who are you? Where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, how did you begin your professional career? All the way to where you are now. So without further ado. It's a lot. Jump. It's a lot, you know. I've lived yeah, I'm a buckling lot. Up. I'm, bu- I'm buckling <laughs> up and my trunk is you know, ready. I have a cup of water. We're going to dive in. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Thank you so much. This is very exciting. And I've watched all your, most of all your interviews and I know you go very deep, so I have to be prepared. Um, you know, I didn't do a meditation before, but we'll just, we'll just see what comes out of it. Yeah, we'll see it natural, all natural. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right. So you're born and raised in? Romania. Where in Romania? Shout in out. Z- in Zalo. So a lot of people, you know. Uh, hold on. How do you, how do you spell that? So help our, our post-production. Z A L A U Zalo. Zalo. It's wow, very, cool. very tiny, very tiny. And every time I meet somebody and they're like, oh my God, you're born in Romania. They they always say one of these two things. One, they say, Are you a gymnast? And I say, No, sorry. <laughs> or they say, But are you a vampire? So that question sometimes, you know, I kind of uh, let because let of Transylvania me. and exactly. Con Dracula, the whole story got it. Exactly, because I am from Transylvania. So I may or may not be a vampire it's yet to be know. yet to be seen yeah well we're gonna see if we can discover that okay so uh <laughs> i want to i don't want to bet the name but taloy what was the name of the, of the villa the place again the town oh uh, zalo z-a-l-a zalo, okay yeah. so born and raised in zalo romania you grew up there you went to school there junior high high school that was the whole all all of that yeah and uh, you know it's it's interesting because when I was born, you know, I grew up in a communist time. Um, mm. And I mean, I, I don't know if I should say how old I am, but I was, I'm, I'm you know, I'm there. And uh, I was in the communist um, era and I grew up, I went to school. I remember, um, you know, seeing the president um, on TV, like the, the only president time. President Ceausescu we back in the day? Yes. Uh-huh. The oh, only so, yeah, time. just as a sign note for the listeners, Ceausescu was like a king over there he was like, yes. like uh, and he was in a tyrant and he had uh he, i believe he built the largest house or, yes. or presidential residence yes. resi- residency in the world uh just you know to, to it was just super flamboyant uh, yeah. and you got a chance to see him that was probably something to to be remembered um <laughs> uh, but how how big was the town for example give us some context how oh, big was it was um, it rural was it city like no so my town it's um surrounded by i think it's maybe like 20, 30,000 people. Uh, but it was, it's all surrounded by villages. So it's our little city, it's villages, and then you drive, and then there's another city, and then there's- Is it in the mountains? mountains? Um, yeah, we are by a little, a, a very small mountain. And that's the beauty of Romania. You have mountains everywhere and valleys and lakes, and it's very, very pretty. Um, but I was saying, as I was saying, you know, I grew up in that era. So in my head, I didn't know there was other countries out there. So the <laughs> way, you know, the way we were kind of held down and also I was young. I was yeah, so yeah, young. of course, of course. And so your you world know, was I, very narrow and that was very, your cosmos. This, this is where this all, you know. Exactly. Very small. And, you know, we had the, the communist president and, you know, he wanted us to remain in Romania. Nobody gets out. Um, he really wanted to like build his population. He wanted us to have a million kids and to continue the legacy. And you are right. He did build the biggest uh, parliament house and it's huge. I went uh, two years ago in Bucharest and saw it and he, that's what he wanted. He wanted to show that he has this like power and uh it's really it's really beautiful and it's a beautiful story but he was a little bit you know uh, yeah cool. i know it wasn't a happy ending for at the end of it he, he got toppled down he got executed i believe and yeah. uh you know uh, when the you know the whole communist uh, you know system kind of collapsed but um so let me ask you about your parents a little bit what was uh, you know what were kind of industries they they were involved in when you were growing up 
So my dad did construction um, and he was working with like different companies. So there were a lot of Italians coming in Romania at that time because everything was so cheap. So they wanted to like start building different things. So they will build houses and they will build warehouses. And my dad somehow got connected with it, which was good because we, that was like our good period of time where actually my dad made some money. Um, my mom and almost 99% of the women in our city, they all worked in a factory. And the factory was like um, a clothing uh, making factory. And apparel paid, clothing, yeah. Yes, paid very little. I mean, very, very little. Worked over time. I would barely ever see my mom. Yeah. I would barely ever see our dad. So um, I have two siblings and all three of us, like we would go to school by ourselves. We would come home by ourselves. So we the had youngest, the, oldest, the middle? I'm the oldest mm -hmm. and the smartest. <laughs> and the pioneering it seems like you're also yeah, probably a yeah, pioneer yeah hopefully they're not gonna listen to this one but it's true <laughs> uh so you know we all had the key around our neck like our generation is called the generation with the key around their neck you know we all the had one the that's kind of uh the one that's on the loop or color with all these colors yes, the, plastic, yes. The, the rubber one that snaps well we had the, the different designs but yes that was yeah. one so we we all had it we would go inside the house we would you know feed ourselves we would have to clean and we were very little but it wasn't just us so in my head you know i was like oh my god like it, it's just something didn't feel right like okay why are we just born and all we have is to work i barely see my parents and then i'm going to school and i'm gonna get a job so i can work 24 hours and then die like it just seems so sinister to me even as a, a young child so i started developing this idea in my head like there must be something else out there. So I started having conversation with my dad and he started telling me about this like place. It's called America. And basically the way he described it, Yoni, I, I thought like they were like rivers or honey and honey and milk. Like wow. he described America as the, he had never been here either. You know, impossible. Like you, you couldn't even go to our neighboring country. Yeah. It's called the iron curtain back in the day. You know, the world was pretty close to the East, to the Eastern bloc, uh, communist bloc. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But the, 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 the notion was that America is a land of opportunities. Yes. Uh, it's paved in gold. And this is what he, uh, he immersed your mindset, uh, you know, as you were growing up. Um, okay, so let me understand this. So you did uh, junior high, high school, you graduated. Where'd you go next after you graduated uh, uh, high school? So I, I finished high school and for Romania, the schools are very, very tough. I mean, they're extremely tough. So to be able to go into college that's like with scholarship, you need to not only have perfect scores, I mean, perfect A's all throughout, but not only the score for the test, throughout your high school too. So they, they would count the four years plus the test of the scores, uh, plus, 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 a million things. So school wasn't that like big deal for me I mean I I've made it like I was good like I liked a few things I love math I love psychology but I sucked at like chemistry and physics and all this so my scores weren't that high they were just like kind of like average mediocre and then um when I went to uh the college the I got in, but not on scholarship. I got in with the, you know, you had to pay. And there was, we didn't have any money. So I stayed in my city and I was like, you know what, then I'm going to apply to the school. They had this program in our city. It was called um, uh, something about custom. Like you were able to work in customs, you know, like where they check the passport and all this. So I was like, you know, this sounds like a great opportunity. Like, I, I wouldn't mind it. So, so I customs, went uh, you're saying when, you know, there's a product being imported to Romania, yeah? Correct, correct, mm -hmm. correct. So um, I went to that school for two years and one of my teachers uh, saw that I was like, you know, quite smart. I was interested. And when we finished those two, uh, pro they're called, I think it's like professional school or something. Professional colleges, yeah, for a specific industry and in occupation. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if they have this here in U.S., but in Romania, it was it was a big. I like, think they have this for like uh, for the medical field when you want to be a certain assistant for radiology or machinery, stuff like that. They have these special colleges. I know okay. at least here in New Jersey they have. Yeah, but good point. Yeah, so um, I went there and, you know, I uh, I was offered a position after I finished my school from my from my teacher, uh, the professor that was uh, teaching us, and I started working at the local... So what year did you graduate and start working? Um, 2000, so I came here 2003, so this was in 2000. Yeah. So the year 2000, you graduate out of that, you know, professional mm -hmm. college and you mm -hmm. dive into the world of yes. imports and customs, yes. uh, working yes. for the government. 
No. So it was a local office in our city. So it was just a private business, but um, they had a deal with the customs. So any truck that would come from Hungary or, you know, Italy or whatever it would come from, instead of going to the border, they would just let them through with the seal on the truck and with paperwork. And they will say, go to the nearest customs office, which was our city. So they would come there, all the trucks, and we would uh, open the seal. We would do their customs paperwork paperwork and all this. And I really liked that. I was very young and I was, I was starting to make pretty good money, but it was so much pressure. Um, and then, well, so one second, so this is a private company that yes. the government gives us authority to mm -hmm. essentially handle, Correct. um, the, all the, all the processing of the customs. So you can actually yeah. validate that it's there. There's nothing, no fishy business and stuff like that. And you charge a fee for that service. So it makes it uh, for commercial companies, much faster and smoother and less bureaucracy. That's kind of the the thing exactly there exactly a hundred percent right yes gotcha. okay and uh it was fun but i i was the youngest one working there it was a lot of pressure like you couldn't make mistakes like a, a mistake would cost us like a lot of money and uh it, we were always under observation it was it I had to mature really quickly, you know what I mean? To be in that position. And it was good. Again, it was making money, but I was working from like 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m. every single day. It oh, was intensive. It, yeah. it was a lot. It was a lot for me. But you and were doing then, it still living in the, the same town or did you move to another town? Uh, no, I was still in, in the same in the same town. And uh, I was still actually taking some classes at night uh, just for some things that I wanted to learn extra. I've always been interested in studying. I've always been interested in like the study of how the mind works and all this. I don't know. I just had that inside of me. So mm -hmm. um, I was I was working late one night um, and no, I was coming out from my school, from my night classes. And um, I was walking home because the, the, the city, you can probably walk from one side to the other in like an hour so where i was like it would take me maybe 20 minutes so yeah, charming. I, I was, it sounds so lovely you know a nice town you can cross it an hour there's an everybody knows school, you works. everybody knows each other yeah, you can't do yeah. anything everybody knows what everybody's <laughs> Shout doing out to everybody hey, hey, hey. It's, great. <laughs> it's so true um so yeah one night i i got out of the class and i was walking home and i remember um it was so cold. It was like super, super winter. And I was walking home and I just looked up at this, um, like uh, there was a light, you know, a lamppost on the road. And I saw this little note and I was getting closer. I was like, what is that? And I kid you not, Neoni, this is what it said on it. Do you mm -hmm. want to go to America? Call this number. Wow. Freaky. So Freaky. where your father was dripping to you the whole time, yes. right? You were growing yes. up on this, you know, yes. this, um, this uh, belief that America is a land of golden honey, honey on your way back from work, you said? Yes. Uh, from, so I worked and then I went to school and then I was walking home tired, cold. It was, it was, I was like, I need a miracle or something. And, and I, the United States of America came knocking yes. as an opportunity on yes. a, on a, on a yes. pole in the, in the night, in the, in a freezing winter in your yes. town, small town in Romania. Yes. That is why okay. I think either I'm special or somebody <laughs> else is looking out for me because even when I look back, I'm like, did that really happen to me? Because that's, that's divine intervention for sure. Okay. So you saw this and what happened? What'd you do with this information? I took the number. It was just the number. I took the number. I wrote it down quickly. I ran home. I said, dad, I'm going to America. He's like, yeah, sure. You're going to America. I'm like, yeah, look, there's this number. Let's call. So we wait until the next day we called and they said they, they have their office, this company in the next city over to us an hour away. And they told us that, um, if I want to go to us, I need to have a driving license. I need to have a thousand dollars, which we didn't have all this stuff, right? They wanted to make sure that we qualified before we got there. But um, what so was we, the, what was the contest context of sending you to America or what was the, so this it program was, uh, this? It's an au pair. I don't know if you've ever uh -huh, heard of yeah, it. It's, sure, it's, yeah, it's sure. like For a nanny. Pairs, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's like a nanny program. That's why, you know, they wanted us to have, um, you know, the driving license because you get to America, you have to drive the kids to school and you have to do really different, different things. But I really wanted to go. So I begged my dad. I was like, please, like, this is my chance. Like this sign was for me, like impossible. I don't know who put it there, but it's definitely for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't like a professional ad or nothing. It was just like, it could have been a scam. I could have, I could have been sold. For... I could have been sold for organs. Oh and, my and, goodness. And, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I mean, for me, for my kind of uh, instincts, I would probably not believe it. I would probably say, ah, 
and keep going, but you didn't do that. That's that's admirable. No, you took because, a leap of faith, and thank God yeah. it worked. It seems like it yeah. worked out. I don't know yet. We're gonna see the story soon. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I think like that happens a lot in my life. Like if I really want something, somehow things just work out, and they just magically yeah. appear. So tell so me also, I, which year did this happen? Uh, because you, you started working around two thousand. So this was the same year, or this correct. was correct? No, so ahead? this was this was in two thousand two. Uh, so you're already two years into your your, your position you're starting yes. your career yes yes and, so this um, was 2002 and um this was i think uh november the sep no i think it was like november it was cold it was snowing it was already like winter and then i went to their office and they said you know um you know this is the things that you need just make sure that you have all this paperwork vaccines and some other crazy things that they needed and i was like dad like what are we gonna do a thousand dollars you only like back then it was like somebody's salary for a year in Imagine. romania or yes. your, your village yes. your town yes. got it wow like a this. year worth of work just to send you just to apply this is before tickets the, or they yeah. do the tickets but like what's the uh, other no, they, economics in there they had it all included which was good they had the visa they had the uh the fly you know sending it to the family which was good but still it's like where are you going to get a thousand dollars so um my dad was able to um you know borrow that for me because he didn't have a thousand dollars and uh he actually got 1100 he so he paid for the program a thousand dollars and I went to the to the interview in Bucharest. It was my first time in like a big city. I had never left my really? family. Really? Never left my 2002 town. 2002 was the first time for you in Bucharest? Wow, that's... that's yeah. uh, first time for years. me to see... To After see college. Wow, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, I got there, like we went on the train and it was cold and it was like, like we were, we were poor, like you, we were just normal, your normal average people in Romania. So I got there and I remember we were waiting at the embassy and we were waiting outside and it was cold and every single person that would go in front of me, they would come back crying. And I was like, oh my God, like, how am I ever going to get the visa? Cause they got denied, denied, denied. It in was the very, embassy, all very, the people coming in for a visa. Yes. Crying because it got denied. Yes. yes, of course. This is their opportunity of their lives. Like you either make uh, it or you don't. And if they deny you, then it's very hard for you to come back. Like they would see that you were denied at this day by this day and they will always deny you. So oh, wow. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I want to go to America. And then I would be like, I would be afraid. I'm like, oh my God, like what if they deny me? But on the other side, it's like, but that sign was for me. Like I was meant to come here. So I would, I would calm down. And then until they called my name and like I had this head on oh my god i look terrible <laughs> took my head on and I, and I went like you know like one of those rain on cats that you see on the street and i went and they're like so you want to go to america like in bro super broken english barely any um like yeah what are you gonna do there i want to work for a family like who knows what else i told them oh but what do you want to do when you come back because the program is one year you know, you have to return time. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So they wanted to see where my mind is going. Like, am I going to stay over my visa and become illegal in America? Or am I going to return? I said, of course, I'm going to come back. I want to open like a kindergarten and I want to do this and this. Of course, in my head, I'm like, as soon as I'm in America, adios. I'm never <laughs> going back. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh of course at least I'm you're like, honest about it at least you're honest about it now after the fact you know it's all good <laughs> but of course i'm like yes of course i'm coming back i'm gonna do and you know what i i got accepted by 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 it's a miracle and by god's will and you know I've, it was i'm telling you it was meant for me to come to on the spot they said you're good boom here's yes. a stamp you're good off you go on your merry yes. way okay so yes. this is 2002 and yeah this is fly. how quickly did you uh, get out of town uh two months Two months. You're probably Two super months. excited, huh? You're probably walking on And cold. scared. Uh -huh. Yoni, I had never left my my family. Never been on a plane? Never, never been on an airplane? Of course. I've never even been on nothing. Like, I, uh, I never drove until then. Like, so I got my license. Uh, I, I did everything. And, and then I was like, oh, my God. Like, in my head, I was like, so I'm leaving my family, my brother, my sister, my friends, my boyfriend, and my little boyfriend I had then. I was like, and I don't know when I'm going to come back when that feeling hits you it's it's like oh my big, god like i thing, need yeah. to like i cannot be a kid anymore i right. can no longer you grow be up a kid. in a snap right so and oh my god like so where'd you I, land I, where'd you where did this take you where, where, where were you heading to so um first they bring you to new york 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you go to a three day orientation and they, they send you to whatever family that picked you. Um, it's like they, they pick cattle or something, you know, like, oh, this person here, this person. Here. So and, they send me. And this was just for the New York area or the across the United no, States? For everyone. They go mm-hmm. to New York, they do the orientation. They send me to Lincoln, Massachusetts. Lincoln, Massachusetts, up yes. north. Got it. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, and so I got to New York and I was like, oh my God, like, holy cow, this is like in the movies. Imagine like a country girl. Think of me as somebody that's literally what you, I know you have that image in my, in your head. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. My dad, so he borrowed the 1100, paid a thousand for the program, gave me a hundred bucks. Soon as I got to New York, I bought a calling card and I bought like some chips and I had like Barely chips, any, right? yeah, ba- yeah, barely yeah, barely because I didn't like any food on the plane. I've never been on the plane. On the plane, I couldn't eat anything. I was like, oh my God, what is this? This is the worst. I was like in a plane full of people that I didn't know and I was going to live with some family that I don't know. And it was a lot. It was a lot of emotions and uh, a lot of uncertainty. But at the same time, I'm like, I know this is my calling. I know I am going to where I need to be and it's not going to be easy. And I landed there and somehow like I I felt home, you know, I really felt home, which is very, very interesting for somebody that's never even been to another country. This is the greatness of the the United States of America. It's just, uh, it is everybody. This is the world, an opportunity for anybody from every corner of the world. Literally, there isn't any place in the world that hasn't sent their people here and they found, you know, a new life and a new beginning. Okay. So you went to Lincoln, Massachusetts, you get into this family. What was the experience then? Take us there. Oh my God. Horrible, horrible experience. Oh no. Oh my God. Of course I had to, but you see only when I look back, I'm like, you know what? That's really sucked, but it had to happen to make the person that I am today. For sure. So, you know, the person, the the family was so tough and rough on me. And they had like, they had like so many au pairs before me. And so I basically got there. They're like, hey, so tomorrow you got to cook, clean. You got to take the kids to never been on a freeway. They gave me a, they gave me like a, a suburban or something. I've never even seen a big car like that. Okay. Like, I don't know if you, if you know, like in Romania, we have Dacias and Skodas and those little tiny cars that like you barely drive yeah, little them. Little Beatles. Yeah. But you, you're getting this almost the size of a truck, semi trailer truck. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, suburban. yeah, just take the car and take the kids to school. David, the little kid will tell you how to go there. So I go on the freeway, but this is one good thing. Nobody told me that I should be scared. Imagine <laughs> like to be on a freeway. Everybody that comes from overseas, they're scared of freeways here. So Lincoln, okay, Massachusetts is the Boston area or is there more? Yeah, uh, uh-huh. it's a, yeah, it's a suburb of, of Boston. Uh, of Boston, yeah. right? Yeah. Gotcha. And they gave me and go in a winter. And I was like freaking out. I was like, I don't know what I was doing. But anyway, that wasn't it. Like the family, they were just kind of like mean. And, you know, I, and I didn't know any English. I didn't know how to cook. On behalf of I America, know. I apologize for this first experience, but I'm sure you, you're able <laughs> no, no, to, uh, it was exactly, it was exactly what I needed. So That's after three thing. months in, it just didn't work out. Anymore. By the way, um, they paid one good thing. They paid to go, for me to go to Harvard. So I went to Harvard for a semester. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Not many people know that. Uh, so that's what was the purpose thing. of that? Just as a perk, just a bonus yes, or they're like exactly. Harvard people and no. anybody in their um, house has to be some Harvard. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe a combination of both. But when you do sign up for this program, you know, they encourage the families to. Uh, so this is a cultural experience. It shouldn't yeah, be like yeah. African slave work, <laughs> but, they, you know, they, they use it like that. You know, it's so like they combine 40. slavery work, but also some, you know, educational benefits on yeah. the side. So they, they sent me to Harvard and I was like, you know, working all day and studying at night and it was hard. Um, so, you know, I mean, the breaking point was one night the lady came after everything, you know, just bottling up. She's like, oh, I need you to take my child to like hockey right now. It was like 11 p.m. And I, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because tomorrow it was the first time I ever spoke out um, oh. until then. I was like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, um, but that night I was like, you know what? I'm tired. Like I'm I have to wake up at five, take the tea. I think it's called the tea right the the um like the train oh, the no, train. From, yeah, yeah. from yeah to um yeah to, to school and I was like I have to get up and she got so mad like she called her husband like I can't believe like Isabel is not listening like we need to get rid of her and I started crying I was like oh my god what oh, am I gonna no. do the American dream is falling apart yeah yes so um every single person every single nanny that comes to us they get like a uh, like a counselor almost like somebody that you can reach out to. So I reached out to them and I said, you know, this is not working out, but they allow you to switch families three times. So I did, um, you know, the first one I was like, three strikes and you're out. Correct. 
So first strike. Yeah. So they, they let you switch other families and they say, hey, do you want to go back to Romania? Or you want to continue for us to find you another family. And of course, it was very tempting. Imagine when everything goes horrible for you and you miss home, you miss. You just want to call parents. it quits. I said, I'm yes. out. I'm out. But you know, then I, tried. I was like, you know what? This is this is the moment in my life where what I pick right now, it will define everything in life for me. So, of mm -hmm. course, I said, yeah, look for another family. I want it with all my heart, with all my everything in my soul. Like, I wanted to go back. But yeah, I yeah. said, I can, I cannot do this. Not for me, not for my parents, not for everyone. So my goal for coming to America was nothing to do with me. It was more to do with my family. I really wanted to take them out of that poverty yeah. and that, that work. And that, that was my goal. Like, this is all I wanted. I said, I'm going to go there. I'm going to make the money back to send to my father, you know, the one he borrowed. And I just want to bring my parents in America. I said, how in the world am I going to do that if I call quits as soon as something bad happens? And so I said, nope, let's push on. And they found me another family. They find me like 10 other families. One was in Chicago. One was there. One was there. One was there. And then finally, the, the last one I talked to, there was some, it was somebody from here, from San Diego, actually. And they had one child and the lady was so nice and like, oh my God, you're going to love San Diego. And our kid is an angel, angel, and quote, unquote, uh, angel, yeah. quote, yeah. unquote angel, and he's going to be great. And I was like, you know what, what do I know about California? Nothing. I know it's sun. I know it's fun. Let's do it. Came to California, Yoni, in March after my birthday. My birthday is March 8th. So March like, uh, 2003. Yeah. March 8th was my birthday. And I think I came here <clears throat> like end of March. And oh, that a quick, quick little story about that. So, you know, second time on the plane, right? I don't know anything. So from uh, at Boston, you know, Boston to San Diego, right? Lo Fly. Logan, yeah. Logan yeah. Airport, yeah. So I, you know, plane lands i i get out from the uh you know from the plane and i said you know can i make a call to the to to the family i want to make sure they're here she's like sure it's a local call of course it's local i i give her her number it was like whatever 619 number she's like this is not local i'm like what do you mean it's not local she's like where do you think you are? I'm like, I'm in San Diego. She's like, no, you're not. You're in Phoenix, Arizona. Connection. And you had a connection? I started, yes. I didn't know <laughs> what that is. I started crying. And uh, like three of them came over. Like, oh my God, you're fine. Like, we'll take care of you. I was like, oh my God. Like, how are they ever going to find me? So I'm lost sweet, in so America. Cute. I was lost in America, right? <laughs> like, I didn't know. I didn't know there's connections. Like, what do you mean? I get on the plane and when he lands, I'm there, right? And <laughs> uh, that is so sweet. So yeah, uh, so, yeah this was a connecting flight. And, and yeah. Had a connection in Phoenix. You had no clue what that means or what's going on. Yes. I'm like, can I ever get back to them? They're like, yeah, we got you. Like, we'll put you on the next plane. We'll call the family. Very sweet. That's why. You know what? I loved America. I loved America from the very first moment I came here. And not a lot of Europeans can say this. They they say, oh, American sucks. Like, I don't like it. Like, I love it. Every time I needed help with something, somebody was always there for me. I didn't even have to hand. ask. I didn't have to ask. They were always so helpful, so loving, so smiling and accepting. How can I not love this place? So I came to, so finally I land in San Diego and I see, all I see, it's like March, right? I came from like super snow to like palm trees and oh, hot. Nice. And I was like, this is America. Now I've made it. I'm <laughs> like, I, I will never. And this is what I said. I will never let anybody mistreat me the way that family did. Never will I allow it. But, but you were see, able to do that before entering the second family or after you realized that you, please, you know, no, no, no. As before? soon as, you know, so all this time that I was having like difficulties with this family, I knew that's not me. Like I should speak up. But in my culture, they always told us, don't speak up. If somebody asks you for something, you do it. You shut up. You be quiet. You keep your mind, you know, be submissive. Like, yeah. Very. So, you know, I had this battling, conflicting thoughts all the time. Like, you know, I didn't want to like clean the cat's poo because it wasn't into my contract, but I had to do it. And every time they did these things, like it just made me angry inside. Like mm -hmm. I have to keep doing, keep doing it. They gave me a curfew. I was off at 7 p.m. I had to be in the house at 8 p.m. So I had one hour to do what? Walk around the neighborhood. They were literally taking advantage of me like to the fullest. And this is the first family. Yeah, this is the, the Boston, uh, the, the Lincoln yes. uh, Massachusetts yeah. family. Okay, so now we're in San Diego, California, now, different vibe, West Coast vibe. I'm in San Diego. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be a boss. 
and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You know, <laughs> you know, I come and of course, you know, it takes time to really build confidence. But, you know, um, they after I got there, they uh, they were a nice family, but the kid was crazy. But I loved him. His name was Elliot. Very, very, very cute. And like we had a good relationship, but he had all the spoiled like nannies that would spoil him. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're not playing this game. So he in the end, he loved me so much. But I I, I it was a difficult time. Um, but it does, it didn't matter because I was in San Diego. It was one kid. I was like free. They gave me a car. I could drive. But once they saw that I have a little bit of freedom. They tried to pull this, not the same thing, but kind of like, oh, now you have a curfew. And I said to them, you know what? My parents never gave me a curfew. I could do whatever I want. I'm not going to start listening to somebody else tell me what time to, to be home. Mm -hmm. I work for you at eight in the morning. I will be home at 7.59. Mm -hmm. Since that moment, they respected me. Not that I did, but from that moment, they're like, oh. Okay, well, she she has a personality. Yeah, like, a, okay. she stands alone. She's not, you know, uh, this is not servitude. This is business. This is uh, exactly. Is. And every time I did little things like this, it made me grow a little more. It made me more confident. Like, okay, like I started founding, finding myself into this new land, this new country, this new continent. That and culture. You see how very different cultures are and how they can really mess with your brain. Because you know, I grew up thinking one thing, but then you know, you come here and if you don't show that you stand for yourself they will take advantage of you and it's just because of how this country is and it's not good or bad um it's because of you know the, the reality the thing this is the reality this, yeah this is the evolution of, of the culture yes. here yes. okay so this second family went all the way in to, to yes. complete the year I completed the year. They loved me. I loved them. I was, you know, they were treating me so nicely. You know, here and there we would have like disagreements, but I always knew to stand my ground. So that's what I'm saying. That family from the first one from Lincoln, Massachusetts, I even now I keep thinking I should send them a letter and really thank them because without them, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to come to US in the first place. That's their true. daughter was born the same day as me, which is why they picked me. So my uh, their daughter and me uh, both were March 8th. But, you know, even though we had our disagreements, and they were in my life because they had to be. They, they served their purpose perfectly, for better or worse, they served it perfect. perfectly. Okay, so let's head into uh, the, the timeline because we could probably do a 10 episodes with Oh, more. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so 2003, end of it, you finished with, uh, with the San Diego family. What was next? You're supposed to go back to Romania, but it seems like you're yes. still in the United States. So take All us right. there. What was the next station? Yes. So, uh, oh my God, my life is so beautiful. I'm telling you, <laughs> like, I mean, of course I had bad things happen like here and there. I mean, I got robbed, but that's another story for another episode. Uh, but so the family that I, I stay with, they were Jewish and I used to uh, take the kid Elliot to the JCC, the Jewish Community Center. So there I met this amazing lady. Her name is Kara. And, you know, I just started having like a friendship with her. Like we would go out. She's like, oh, let's go get you some juice. And she kind of like looked at me at this like poor kid that doesn't know what the hell she's doing. And she kind of took me under her wing. Um, and we really became close friends. I said, you know what, Kara, like my time is up. Like I have to leave. Like, what should I do? She's like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Come stay with me. Like she had two kids. Um, she was divorced. She said, you know, I could use some help. You can drive my kids. Like I can't pay you but you can live with us, you can eat with us. And I was like, oh my God, like so how she was lucky. basically adopted you in a way. Yes. At when you finish your shift, you know, with the whole year. Um, the whole year. Yes, and yes. I'm so thankful. I We're still very, like we're best friends still today. Like she was like my second mom, you know, like yeah, yeah. how lucky and blessed am I to have met the perfect person to take me in. Like, yeah, if you have a Jewish mother in America, you know you're on the right spot. That's it. You're good. Yes, you're supposed yes, to be a doctor, yes. lawyer, or businesswoman. That's all it is. It's the only options very, you have. Very sweet. And like, I'm telling you, she took me in like her daughter, like fed me like I would be, you know, with her kids. She let me do whatever I want. Like, I'm like, I'm going out. She's like, cool. Take my car if you want. Enjoy. Like, she was fun too. And after that, so through her, she had her friends and um, we went out one night. So I didn't have a job anymore. Well, we so went this out is already 2004, right? So you yes. uh, you started moving, living there 2004? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I didn't, you know, I didn't know many people. She had her like friends and they were all like, you know, 10, 15, 20 years older than me. And I would go out with them. I was the only one, the young one, like listening with them. Like, you know, I didn't have anything else to do. So we went to this restaurant bar here in San Diego. And when we got to the bar, the manager was like, you know, what do you want to drink? I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I, I just want to die. He's like, really? You don't drink? I'm like, no, not really. He's like, 
do you work? I'm like, no. He's like, well, do you want to work here? I was like, uh, yes. So many knocks, yeah. Yes. And, I, and he's like, well, when can you start? I'm like, tomorrow. And they're like, boom, loved it. But you see, every single job that I ever did, Yoni, I put my whole soul, my whole soul in it, and they could see it. Like, you know how hard it is to find somebody that works hard for you and for Hold your Hold on, business? he identified that you are a stand-up something. girl, right? Yeah, you are- something about something about maybe what I said, maybe the fact that, you know, I, I, I was with all these people that were like drinking and I was the only one not drinking. And So you can focus on what he needs you to, to do yes. best or in his bar. Exactly. Make so money, wasn't- serve, and, you know, create, create, create growth for the business. Yeah, so it was a combination of many things. He said, you know, we have uh, this uh, event planner and she just quit today mm-hmm. and we need somebody to replace it. We'll teach her everything. I was like, I will do anything, of course. <laughs> Uh, yes, second day, like I started working, I went there, I learned everything that was a, anything about event planning. So there was an Italian restaurant, very beautiful, downtown San Diego called Galileo 101 in the big Galileo tower. 101? Yes, in a huge yeah. tower. Uh, so I learned everything really quickly and I'm very passionate about people. Like you say, I, I just love like energy and they would call me and I'm like, yeah, I'll set up the party for you and we'll do baby showers and weddings and this because they had uh, two big like party rooms. One could fit like up 300 people. So the way they paid me, they were paying me $8 an hour, which was like, oh my God, that's a lot for, oh, by the way, I didn't mention I was making $140 a week with the family. For, a week, for, four, for 40 hours work uh, 600 a month something like that yes wow. so imagine going from that to eight dollar an hour i was like holy cow i'm bawling now right <laughs> so they were giving me a dollar but the other thing that they gave me which started me on this entrepreneurship path a little bit of a seed they paid me commission on every single party that i sold so every time you know they had a party of like 300 people and the, the we would add the gratuity in there that let's say was like a thousand dollars well i was gonna get a percentage of that i don't know if it was like a hundred dollars or 120 you, whatever piece of the action you you you, you discover that you could have a piece yes. of the action and that probably fueled you to the moon hundred percent. So I was like calling and I was doing this and they really loved it because I was making the money and there, they got a deal, a box an hour plus, you know, here and there's some money, but it made me realize like how important it is to, I, to, to really create something for yourself. And this commission part really drove me. And I think all entrepreneurs know this is like, okay, so the hourly, like we don't really care about that, but what is it that we can do that can make us a lot of, a lot of money? Because I've never liked selling my time, my time for money. Like I hate that even now, like I, it's not my thing, even though every job that I had, I, I killed it. I worked my best. And um, so from then on, uh, I continue working at this restaurant until other opportunities from another bigger restaurant and they discovered me and they offered me a better deal and I went with them. A better package, they, yeah. Yes, which it was a mistake. But, you know, you you live and learn. I didn't like them. They weren't a good fit. They were kind of mean and it wasn't, it wasn't a good fit. But, you know, I'm always trying to grow. I'm always trying to, um, <clears throat> you know, succeed. And I remember I was looking and, you know, I, we were in downtown and I was looking at all these people like dressed in nice suits and, you know, their makeup done. And I was like, and they would walk into these tall buildings and I always, wonder I was like I wonder what it's like to like be like a business person like where are they going like I would visualize and fantasize about like having something you know I mean working in a restaurant like it wasn't like so you see the people yeah. in those big yeah. shiny towers so busy wondering what is it yes. what's that magic that they're yes. trapped into yes. and if, if, uh, and wondering I guess if you're ever going to get a taste of that yes yeah. And, you know, I would really just like I was visualizing coming to America, I was visualizing this life, like, what can they do? What are they doing that I could be doing? I've always wanted to know, like, what is consulting? What is this? Well, I've always had that curious mind. And how could I become that? And I, you know, I knew that I came to America. And, you know, I was 21 years old, and I had barely any English. I, you know, I didn't have any college here in US. I didn't have anything to be recognized by. But what I had was like this passion. I really wanted to make it. And for me, I had to start at zero. So even though I was 21, I counted it as zero for me. I had to learn English, which kids do until like two, three. You definitely right? came here at zero, you know, a clean yeah. slate. You know, you had to write your 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 story here. Yeah. Okay, so I want to touch the years now. So 2004 until which year you were in this industry, you know, I guess hospitality, entertainment. Um, I think I was there until like 2000, 2000, 2007, 2007. So about three years in the mix, 2007. Mm-hmm. What was the next station? Take us there. 
So um, I got married uh, with my wonderful husband, and he's a Marine, actually. And you guys and, met in uh, San Diego, outside yeah, San Diego? we did. Here you in were San stationed Diego. there or, or anything? Yes. Uh-huh. Here in San Diego. And after we got married, he went to um, he, Japan. He got deployed to Japan, actually. So 2007, uh, Japan. We still had the wars with Afghanistan. Yes. Right? Uh, Iraq. Uh, Operation, yep. uh, you know, actually, Iraq I'm sorry. Uh, he had just gotten back from Japan before I met him, and he was going to Iraq. Iraq, gotcha. So you're right. Uh, it was that's when it was like everything bad happened. 2007, and... actually, 2007. It was kind of yeah. when I got here uh, to this country. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a topic for another episode on a different. Ex topic. Yeah, I would like to. I would like to hear <laughs> that. And you know, he um he left for Iraq, and it was it was a horrible time. And I was like, you know, I I, I like I couldn't even focus every single day. So on how, TV how soon was... after you got married did he leave? Um, two days, a minute after. What was the time frame? It was maybe six months got it okay yeah. so short yeah. period of you know very uh, and not, not many people know this but i met my husband in uh september and we got married in october 30 days you're in you're good yeah you, uh, you listen this yeah, is I know, like, I know the army and navy uh, guys you know uh, no it yeah. wasn't even him it was me yeah but no no i'm saying they they're usually yeah. okay with it because the life and the reality is especially yeah. you get deployed to a war zone you see something you like, you, yeah. that's it. You don't, you don't have to date for nine years. You got to go to war tomorrow. So you, yeah. You know, so actually, you know, I, I, uh, I asked him to marry me and, yeah. uh, cause I always, you know what, I know what I want and I always go for it. So I'm sure he didn't was, refuse. Was, I mean, there's nowhere to refuse. Yeah. He's Obviously. like, of course, like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, I'm just, can I say no? I mean, come on, it's me. Uh, Absolutely. so he said yes. And then, you know, he went to Iraq and I was still working at the restaurant and I was like, you know what, this just doesn't feel right. Like that, you know, I didn't like those people, like they, the, the, you Man, grew out of the environment, right? In other yeah, words. and um, you know, my husband is like, you don't really have to go to work. Like, you know, I make enough to support the two of us, and he's like, you can, you know, waste some time or do whatever you want. And I was like, you know what? Okay, cool, I'll do that. And I started getting into real estate. I was like, you know what? Like, people dress nice. They show car. They show nice houses. Like, this may be something that I like. And I love talking to people. Like, I love selling and and I can really sell something if I'm really passionate about it. Like, if I believe in it. I will, I will do it. So I started, I, I went to the school. So the school was two months. I finished it. And I was like, what the hell was this? I don't understand anything. It's like a new language, language, like mm -hmm. easement and this and FHA loans. And I was like, okay, I know nothing of this. So what I did, I took the class again and with the same guy and it, you could take it as many times as you want for free. So I took it and then I went to the exam and I smashed it. I did so good that the professor invited me the next uh, class he had for me to speak in front of everyone, how this girl came from Romania. She had no <laughs> English and you know, she could do it. You guys can all pass it because it was very hard. It's a state exam. That thing is hard. Then again, something by some magic, I got connected with this guy who had a boutique uh, real estate firm. And he's like, yeah, just come work with me. And I start working with him. We split everything half, half. I was making so much money. Like the most I ever made in one day was $79,000 in one day. And this is oh. what, 2007 or 2008 already? Oh yeah, it was like 2008, 2009. 2008 like was the hottest moment before the boom went down, right? So yes. something happened. I have a feeling it's yes. related. So you were I like on the top of the world. I was killing it and I didn't want celery. I was like, nope, we're not doing celery, nothing. I want to prove my own thing. And we were doing property management and we were doing uh, rentals and we were doing sales and everything we did. So if he did a deal, he was split half with me, which is interesting. No company would ever do that. Mm -hmm. They usually, you know, they just either let you do your own thing or they take a percentage, but they don't touch it. Like, like you mentioned, this more of a boutique yeah. was high, high end. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, it was just me and him. And he- the Potential. He still works there and he is 94 years old. This wow, guy. amazing. Yeah, he's killing it still. Um, and so what it was, was the next station uh, after that? Take us, uh, was there a crash, a burn, or something? That no, no. everything was good. I was making money. I got my, my first Mercedes because, you know, I'm European. You know, I have to have my European car. You could have gotten and a Dacia or Dacia, whatever it's called, uh, the oh Lancia. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys have. I'll, over there. I'll, I'll buy it and maybe in the future and uh, save it like. Uh, You'll buy the company. It's okay. You can buy the whole <laughs> manufacturing, the whole brand for a couple hundred million or a few billion, and you'll be good to go. You'll be. Uh, I Any love it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I can do that one day. But um, no, I was doing really good. And my husband calls me one day. He's like, guess what? We need to move to South Carolina. 
I was like, what? My heart, my heart broke. I was like, what do you mean, South Carolina? Like, what? <laughs> where? What? Where is South Carolina? What is that? What language are you, you speaking? Said, you're not South California already here. South California, yeah. <laughs> San Diego already here. So he's like, you know, we, um, you can stay here and continue making money or you can come with me. And I, again, I had to make a decision. If I stay here, I will no longer ever be with my husband again because what mm-hmm. relationships work, family you know, life. like, family yeah. life again, so the decision I between like, work and life. Hold on, but the, which year was that? So this was what year when he told you that? Um, It was 2008, 2008. So a year plus into your real estate, uh, you know, yeah. industry uh, success. Yeah. Uh, he said very successful, killing it, making, uh, I've never thought it possible to make so much money. Right. Like so every day I would South, make Ca- South Carolina or Charleston, Buford, Buford, Buford. never heard of that, but I exactly. Heard it, I <laughs> nobody, nobody heard of it. And probably till the rest of history, nobody will hear of it. It's, it's got it. So you, I guess you said yes. And you left yeah, the industry. I said yes. I said, what am I going to do? You know, I have to follow my husband and I got there. There was absolutely nothing to do. There was one Walmart in the whole town. Me and my Mercedes were that's going. Pretty, <laughs> that's pretty oh. much so, uh, the way America works. Uh, you know, this is in yeah. the middle of America. You got Walmarts and. Um, yeah, Walmart. we had to go from, uh, you know, from where I was in Beaver, South Carolina to Atlanta, to Savannah, Georgia to go to the mall. Like we didn't even have a mall where oh, I was. So but... a different state even. Yeah. Oh. So hold on. So let's try to fast forward a few, a few yeah, elements yeah. here. Go ahead. So 2008, South Carolina, take us uh-huh. a few stations. Uh, on, on, Cause I have a feeling that you guys spiraled around a little bit. Yeah. So we were there uh, for two years and then two or three years. And then in 2010, we uh, were offered this position to go to Africa. And I was like, I'm leaving South Carolina anywhere. I'm going really? anywhere. even to Africa. Yeah. Went to Africa to Rwanda. Have you Hold ever on, seen before that? Yeah, yeah, before Rwanda. So two years, what would you do in South Carolina? Just chilled or you no, did something? I, of course, I can I can never chill. So I went to University of South Carolina and I was studying um, computational science. Wow. And uh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very I'm the owner, but it's great. You picked up uh, another layer of, you know, skills. Yeah. And then yeah, can... I, I really like that. It was very interesting. Um, and I wanted to continue that. Uh, it was a very new program for the university. But we moved to Rwanda and there is no such program online. There's nothing like is that. Is there online in Rwanda back in 2010? So, yes, uh, there was a school that I found that was actually connected with the military. It's called American Military University. Very good school. It's just an online school. But, of course, they didn't have these fancy degrees. So what did they have? Like, just the regular stuff. I was like, okay, I need to finish my college because this was one of my goals that I've had from Romania. I was like, I want to go to America. I want to have a college degree because it was like, you know, back then, yeah, like the basics, you know, the basics, degree. yeah, the basic, yeah. Uh, you know, basic American for the most part, uh, this is their aspiration and, and a dream. And you want to at least have, you know, that checked in your, uh, your bill. Exactly. So I was like, I need to finish my college. So I did accounting. Okay. Finish my accounting degree. Uh, of course, perfect days, like perfect score. Uh, I know nothing of accounting like nothing like I have I have a bookkeeper a CPA and a tax attorney they're all working for me like nonstop. and I'm like I don't want to deal with that it's too much Rhonda, how long did you guys stay there so we were there for a year and a half wow. and uh What's very the name of the town there in Rwanda Kigali Kigali huh? Kigali, K-I-G-A-L, Kigali. Kigali so this is where the genocide happened and the like, Tutsi and the Hutus, Hutus. Hutus and Tutsis yeah. right something like that mm-hmm. Yes. It was uh, terrible back in the 90s, okay? Yes. So uh, a year and a half, so you come back to where, the States in 2011? Yeah, no, 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 no. So I uh, actually started working at the embassy there, and I was working, like, I got my top secret clearance, like, I was in a mix with, like, ambassadors. Look at like, you, I- working for the American government. Oh, yeah. I was, like, I was, like, in the mix. I was, like, okay, I can get used to this life. We had a driver. We had a cook. We had anything you can picture. We didn't have kids then, so, like, Everything that you wanted, you had at your feet. I was like, what is this world? And how can we continue being diplomats? Uh-huh. We even got the blue passport, you know, the, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was just the diplomat passport. Basically, you could go anywhere at any time without any questions asked. Like you had that, you were golden. So awesome. from there, um, we were given another station and that was Burma, Myanmar. Oh, wow. Yes. So and uh, we were there, uh, same thing for about uh, a year and a half. And same thing, I applied for a job there, worked at the embassy, worked at the 
IT department and I was basically like the connection between the ambassador to like the US office and I was carrying like top secret material and it was it just felt so mysterious and it was so cool and I was so like so important you know so yes important. I really loved it but that's what I'm saying every single job that I had I was just like yes like I made it and I you're love growing, it and you're growing, yeah. I was like going with the trucks from the embassy you know the uh, the bulletproof ones from the embassy to the airport so every time we got a package from US which is how I got into Amazon because Amazon was the only one that was sending packages um, to our stations. We would drive all the way on, on the tarmac. And every time we would see our package come from the plane, we would pick it up, put it in our truck, drive to embassy. They were not allowed to touch our stuff, you know, because we had guns, we had like all kinds of yeah, regulations, like, different, yeah. th different things for the military. So, um, and I was part of that. Like, you know, every Tuesday, I think we would go and wait. And it was like, I'm telling you, it was so cool. Super and plus, cool, super I rare love, for anybody to have this experience. Yeah, I love Asia. I love the culture. I love the people. We, we, I used to fly to Thailand once a month to just like relax to this like fancy five star hotel, Conrad, and overlooking like the whole downtown. Like I lived the life. Let me tell awesome. you, it was, and I was making money for something that I love, you know, I mean, it wasn't like real estate money, but it was like, oh, government money, which is, by the way, it's not a lot. Yeah, but in, uh, in in Asia, in Myanmar, uh, it's yeah. probably more than enough, especially also in oh Africa. Oh my God, I didn't even have to touch it because uh, what I didn't tell you is that they give you like a house for free. Platform, everything. Yeah, yeah they, they, they put you in like the best place possible uh, because um, my husband was like the head of the military there. You get a driver, you get everything you want. I'm telling you, I was like... This is the Beautiful. life, but I, I did miss America. Okay, I did so now, miss now I want to package yeah. a few things here or yeah. unpack a few things here. So yes. this is around the 2013 right time frame uh -huh. where I guess e-commerce came knocking, you know, as an opportunity on your door and it started mm -hmm. in Asia and Myanmar, like you would touch it a little bit. Yes. So that's it. This is now I want to open this up because, uh, you know, it leads to where you are now. So take us there. Take us into yes. your, your journey into e-commerce. So, um, the way I, I got to, you know, I was trying to like order like shoes and stuff online because I was trying to be cute and I couldn't find anything because, you know, living overseas is not like living here. You We take for granted everything we have here. We take oh, for yeah, granted just, the fact yeah. that you can go to like Target and buy your face moisturizer, whatever you use. You don't have that there. They have their own culture. They have their own stuff. So, um, you know, I was trying to like order things online and any, any, any place that I ordered like North Shore or Walmart or whatever, none of them shipped. No, they just wouldn't ship, even though we had the the U.S. Um, P.O. box. We, they 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 just couldn't do it. Amazon was the only one. So every time, like I was like, whatever I wanted, like anything you can think of, like books or, um, you know, you name it. So you, Amazon were your access? Yes. To the United States? Yes. All the it way was across my the only, world. It that's was it. the hatch in? Yeah, I got you. It was my only tunnel, my only clear connection. And I was like, what is this company doing that the other companies are not? Like, it really got me interested. I told you, I have this like curious, uh, you know, thing about me. And I was like, I want to know why, like what makes them great. And then I just started looking and I was like, oh, you know, is Amazon selling all the products? Like, I didn't know. I thought Amazon was just this whole big thing and they just have a lot of products. I didn't know there was 30 third party sellers or people like me and you can sell. And then slowly I kind of like peel back the, you know, the information. I was like, you know what, this is actually really cool. So I was like, okay, well, I wonder if I could do it. like, what, what is there that I need to do that I could be doing? So, but it was kind of like running at the back of my mind. Like I still had my, my work, I was doing good, but I, I kept looking at it. Like it was still something just kind of like with America, just something that attracted me, you know? And then um, in 2014, we came back to us and uh, we moved to Newburgh, New York. Yep. You know Upstate where that New is? New York, West Point, you know. That's exactly where... by West Point. So yep. we got there and I, now I was back and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, I did get a job in West Point, actually, still working for the government, uh, just like a very small admin position, but it wasn't, it wasn't like 
you know, oh my God, it wasn't, it wasn't feeling like my soul. So I kept, I kept getting, you know, kept getting attracted to Amazon. And the, the final point came when this guy that I knew from Europe, just friend of mine, like acquaintances, it said, you know what, Isabella, I know you're, you're back in US. Like we kept contact over the years. Um, you know, my dad has this libel fel- factory. We're thinking of putting it on Amazon. Have you heard of it? Like, do you know how it works? And I said, you know, um, I've never said light bulbs. They're selling light bulbs. Yeah, light bulbs. Light- Mm-hmm. Yeah. light bulbs and um he said you know maybe something that you can look into for us you know we're i think they were in uh, ukraine and he said you know you're there maybe you know you can call them faster if we need information i was like sure i'm down for a challenge so we so i started helping him how did i help him um you know we looked at the the listings for the other people i, cr- I created the listing for them i probably very bad because i've never done a listing but all Scrappy, i did was, but you know i guess yeah, it i just out. looked at what the other people were doing that were selling light bulbs like i had to get information from him like what kind of um I, I i don't know what kind of light bulbs there's different kinds like i didn't even know the difference he's like oh no this is like 200 or whatever i i don't even know all the technicalities uh, yeah yeah so th- they would tell me and then they sent they sent the pictures and we just put it up there and it just took off like, I mean, this was, what year are we, 2021, 2015? So, yeah, like six, seven years ago. So much easier. So much easier. He said it was a hungry not- machine. Still is a hungry machine, yeah, but you course. felt like you, whatever you give it, if it just eats. Any yeah. product you give it to eat, just, yeah. you know, it eats and eats and eats, yeah. And we, I really loved it. And I was like, oh my God, there's something to this. So he said, you know, it's about, because, you know, we're here, we are not able to like track um, the products. Do you think you can have some of your friends, like uh, give us a, like feedback, like order the products and see if it comes like with a correct wrapper, if it comes in bubbles, like we just want to get some information because it was very hard for them to like, you know, do this connection between Europe and US. I was like, sure. So I so thought- hold on, let's talk logistics for a second, right? So yeah. this is a manufacturer based in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. You are in the U.S. Well, selling, they were, selling. Yeah, they were doing some things in Ukraine, but uh, there were some some parts of it from China. They were somehow mixing it. So yeah, when they, it. they would send it to Amazon, they didn't always know. You know, I don't think they knew back then. Did like they send it to Amazon to the fulfillment centers. Yes. FBA. Mm-hmm. So they're using yes. FBA. So whatever they're yeah. sourcing around the world, uh, yeah. light bulbs are sent to FBA. They're telling yeah. you to create the listings for us. Pretty much manage the sales, manage yeah. the platform for us um okay yes. from from all this um management what what have, i mean what what gave birth to rank bill so um you know so he said you know you do you think you can have like some of your friends order and act like they were normal shoppers we want to see how amazon handles it mm-hmm. again you know we're all just trying to find out what what is amazon doing at that point so i was like yeah of course he's like and don't worry like I'll, I'll give them the money back like they don't have to like pay for anything i really just want them to test this so i found out like five people like 10 people my friends and they would order and say we would take pictures like hey you know this box came all smashed like you you need Essentially like, a QC quality check, right? Exactly. What's the quality? What's going exactly. on? Exactly. But we experience? didn't know. We didn't really know. We, we were just literally going with the flow, right? So we kept doing that. And, um, you know, he would do it better. He would call the, the factory and say, hey, you need to maybe package it better. You do need to do a drop test, whatever it was back then, until we perfected it. So he had a certain amount of, of units at Amazon and we kept testing with it. He's like, oh, do you think you can have somebody else? Like, I think we're, now we're better. And they did get better every time. But what we realized is like every time we did this orders his ranking went up so if he was like on page two or three whatever quickly he he would go on page one and like he would have all these sales Mm -hmm. and we're like okay wait there's something to this because every time somebody places an order you end up going higher and higher and higher and he said isabella you know i have a friend that you know he wants to do the same thing on amazon with a different product um i think it was like toe rings or something something that you put between your toes for like better walking i don't know some weird stuff okay um and i was he's like do you think you can help him i was like yeah of course he's like and he's gonna pay you i was like what he's gonna pay (laughs) me because this was my friend like you know i was just like you know toying with the idea of like making money online i i didn't know I looked we're trying at to all- say that until then we're just helping a friend out yeah. all this yeah, stuff yeah. all this handling yeah. we're just helping a yeah. friend out and once again this gave birth to uh, economic opportunity for you to, which was to- very good because it didn't put any pressure on me see had I been paid maybe I would have had a different uh, but you see everything happens the way you should like it happened so smooth she gave you just like- gave from herself you just you know surrendered yes. to this opportunity you just gave from yeah. yourself and all of a sudden this opportunity yeah. came back 
and giving you a, 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 a track to build something that is truly unique, your mm-hmm. own, that you own it and yeah. uh, reach hopefully a lot of success. So take us there to those moments. Yeah. So the next, he's like, do you think you can help my friend? Like he has this product and you know, he was almost embarrassed to ask. He said, but don't worry, like he'll pay you. And I was like, sure. He's like, how was $600? And I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> like $600. I'm going to get me some shoes. Like, and you know, it's like internet money is not really real money. You know, for me, it was like, for doing nothing is paying me. Wow. It's just that yeah. was kind of the, the, the feeling. Yeah. We did it. We went through the same process boom again we will do the the pro- <laughs> see my dog sorry in the background okay. uh we would do the product ordering next thing you know product is on page one with like the worst pictures ever start selling boom 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 both of them i think they're still killing it till today like multi-millionaires and they're they send me to another guy and to another guy and the next thing you know i had so many clients that i needed more buyers for so we transferred that from like, hey, do my listing. Cause I wasn't really like, that wasn't my thing. But what I was good at was people. I was like, oh, you need people? I'll find you buyers. What do you need? Oh, I need to do like, um, I need you to check on like 50 products. And I have this product and this product. And do you think they would even send it to my house? Do you think you can check it? At one point I had so many boxes. My husband was like, what is going on? Uh-huh. What are you doing? Why do we get, don't worry. I'm like, they're free. I promise you they're free. He's like, what do you mean they're free? What kind of mafia thing are you going through right now? Like, this is not okay. What are you yeah, doing? So funny. And probably still today, my parents are like, they don't know how I make money. I think and they're <laughs> like, we just see you make money and we don't know what you're doing. Uh, but I, you know, I tell them it's all legal and you know, not, nothing to go to jail for. It's, but, it's all uh, yeah. So next thing you know, it's like, I have all these people. So what I started doing with my buyers, I said, Hey guys, like, you know, there's only a handful of us, but we're growing. So I started doing this referral program for them, but you see, it's all like, I've never had a specialized training in this thing. It was just like literally day by day by day, what I was doing daily life and me thinking, okay, so what is the next step? I need more buyers. Hey guys, do you think you can tell your friends and your friends, friends? And I would give them incentives and I'd give them money. And then, you know, I started getting paid like per order rather than they're just like per job. And, um, you know, I, I started, I was making like $3 a unit and then it was like $5. And of course now we're at 15, but we have like a full team. We have, uh, operations and, you know, we, we service and we help like hundreds and hundreds of sellers. And we've done thousands and thousands of products that you can't even imagine, um, what we done from like literally A to Z, but you see, that's why I think, you know, it really was meant for me to do this because it's the perfect opportunity for me. Cause I love people. So I, on one side, I was helping the sellers, like create this multi-million dollar businesses. But on the other side, I had all these buyers Consumers. who were getting free stuff. They were getting free stuff. And even till today, I get messages like, um, this one lady a week ago messaged me and she said, you know, Isabel, I have to tell you something like, I really thank you. Um, you know, less, you're not only like, you know, you, you gave us so much, but I was able to help seven families to adopt it for Christmas. To right. like, Cause, cause to, they're, they're, yeah, yes. so I want to, I want to, I want to help you here to, to understand. Yes. So essentially the sellers, the Amazon third-party sellers, you connect them with a group of consumers. Okay. So these consumers, it's a whole, you have a whole infrastructure right now for these consumers. Mm-hmm. And these consumers are able to buy the products on Amazon. And by simply buying, let's say you there's a product, you get 50 consumers to buy it, make mm-hmm. 50 orders. And by, by that alone, it spikes the position on the platform yes. for these products. And then because having higher position, it's a snowball effect. It keeps, keeps uh, selling more and more and more. So exactly. that helps the seller. But yes. then in the flip side, the consumer who bought it, eventually you, you credit them, right? They, they, yes. they get a credit. So essentially they just bought the unit, they get a free product. That's it. That's where it starts. That's where it ends. So a, a seller gets the opportunity to improve their ranking. And hopefully if they have a good solid product, they'll stay there and, and prosper. If not, that's already their problem. But the consumers, they can engage as a community. They're interested in more maybe baby products or toys or whatever it is. They have the opportunity to simply get free products, uh, help another business grow. Yes. And this creates like a beautiful storm of, of giving and helping and growing together. And it's the perfect, perfect thing for me because that is my personality. Like all I want to do is help everyone. Like everybody that knows me that are close to me, they know this is like a passion of mine. And you know, it 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 has definitely has something to do with the fact that I I, I grew up very poor, and um, you know, I've always knew how important it is. Like if somebody gave me a gift, like I remember when I was little, like it really like touched my soul. Like, wow. Like I, I started really appreciating that. So when I had the opportunity to be this liaison between like 
these brands who are trying to build their name and they're willing to give their product out for these testers and these people who you know may not have money to like buy gifts for their kids it's for incredible. christmas yeah, like to that, me you know, that just christmas, warms this whole family my heart was able to to get toys and, and yes. have a wonderful christmas that's that's phenomenal that's that's uh really a part of the american magic that you're right now and par- a part yeah. of uh by just you know um having your own business and owning this whole process. Um, okay, so I, I extremely thank you for, for you know, the entire story. It's been, wow, I had no other words besides wow. So I want to kind of package it uh, so, so and, and touch the, the last parts of the episode. So let's see if we got this all correctly. Born and raised in uh, Romania. Once again, the name of the town is? Zalo. Zalo, okay. And then a very local, very rural uh, in Transylvania. Yeah. You finish school uh, and then you take a little bit of a kind of a professional college. And in the year 2000, you start working in the customs industry in Romania for about two years. In 2002, uh, you finish work, you go to school. On the way from school, you see a poll. America comes knocking in the form of this you know, phone number. And then you, uh, you fly to the United States. And around two, uh, the year 2003, essentially, you were already, already in the United States working as an au pair for families. 2004, after you did your whole year, you met a lady at the JCC. She basically hosted you or you gave you a platform or a place to, to live and you found a way into the industry of, you know, dining, entertainment and hosting. And then you did that all the way until about 2007 until you got married. Uh, and then you entered into the real estate world uh, for about a year from 2007 to about 2008. Made a crazy uh, ton of money and in, in the peak of the, of the, the industry before it kind of collapsed uh, 2008, 2009. Actually, it was a big meltdown. But then you uh, 2008 moved to uh, South Carolina. Uh, you know, for about two years, you spent a little time there and doing some education. And then you, uh, you got, you went outside the United States, uh, and nevertheless, outside of the United States, working for the United States, which is a crazy combination. <laughs> uh, you did some time in Rwanda, also some time in Myanmar. Uh, and, and over there, uh, of all places, e-commerce came knocking at your door in the, in the form of you realizing that Amazon is something that is so powerful, so global, so helpful. Uh, 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 then you started dabbling into it. And then 2015, uh, by ha- having, f- you know, being back in the United States, having friends uh, f- from overseas telling you, help us, you know, with this platform, that drew you more and more into what's going on and discovering all these elements that are very useful and uh, helping biz- those businesses to grow. And from that alone, you created this whole infrastructure, this whole business that you now own. You're taking leadership in this position. You're helping so many others, the clients, the consumers, uh, probably your community, your environment. Did I get it right so far? Wow, I must say your memory is sharp. I wouldn't have remembered all of that. <laughs> I mean, you said it, you know, so you do remember it. So we did okay. You did okay. Yeah, no, but if you told me yours, I'll be like, wait, this year and this year, like, <laughs> no, you, yes, you got it right. And, you know, I appreciate you doing this and, you know, walking me down the memory lane because, you know, there are things that I don't think of every day and you just brought me back. Yeah, refreshing it and that. airing it out is really the opportunity that we hope for uh, when yeah. we have our guests in. So thank you so much for all that. Okay, so now I want to pack, unpack, uh, I guess, uh, uh, package the episode and go to the next stage, which will be uh, touching two points. The first one will be is, if, of course, if somebody wants to reach out, learn more about you and connect, where can they find you? And the last thing will be is, what is your message of hope and aspiration? As if it wasn't enough, but the last touches on that, uh, last message of hope and aspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there. Thank you. So uh, you can find me on Facebook, very easy, Isabella Hamilton or at rankbell.com. And my message for everyone listening is, you know, if you have something that you really truly want in your soul, and you know, for a fact that, you know, you are meant to do it, go for it. And I know it sounds so simple. But, you know, for me in Romania, I didn't think there was ever going to 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 come away from me to come to America. But even so, I didn't lose hope. And when you have such a strong wish, I promise you guys, I with all my heart, I promise you that the universe will revolve around you to make that happen. There was no way I would have seen that message on a poll just for me to come to America. There is no way somebody offered me a job just like this. There was no way this lady who didn't know me invited me to live with her in her house. Every single thing that happened in my life is because I I visualized it, even though it may not have been the exact way. Like, I didn't know how I was going to come to America, but I knew I was going to come. I knew it so deep in my heart that if you came and said, Isabella, I'm going to bet you a million dollars or the life of your whole family or something crazy, I would say, I will take that bet because I know what I want. And once you know that and you truly believe that, don't let anything else, every other outside noise 
just ignore and follow the path. And it's as simple as that. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, before we go, regarding your family, are they now in the United States or still in Romania? My family is here. And on top of that, I bought them the next door house to me. So literally from my house, I opened the gate and it's my parents. Beautiful, guys. I'm going to end with this. Dreams come true. And this is uh, the reality of things. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. Until next time. Thank you.